In chapter 9, section 4, we are graphing linear equalities in two variables and systems of linear inequalities. Our learning objectives are to graph a linear inequality in two variables and solve a system of linear inequalities. Determine whether the ordered pairs given are solutions of the linear inequality in two variables. Here we begin with the inequality x minus y is greater than negative 2. We are going to check to see if our given points, 0, negative 1, is a solution to that inequality. By plugging in 0 for x and negative 1 for y, if we find that the inequality is true, then we can say that that point is a solution. We would also try the ordered pair 1, 4. In each case, we would determine if the inequality is true or false. So we replace the inequality, the x and y, in the original inequality with the given x of 0 and y is negative 1. So by plugging it in, we get 0 minus a negative 1. We want to check, question mark, is that greater than negative 2? By simplifying 0 minus a negative 1, we get a positive 1. 1 is greater than negative 2. Is that a true statement or a false statement? In this case, 1 is greater than negative 2. This is true. So that means 0, negative 1 is a solution. Let's try the point 1, comma 4. Replacing x with 1 and y with 4 in the original inequality, we want to check to see if that is greater than negative 2. When we simplify the left side of this inequality, 1 minus 4, we get negative 3. Negative 3 is that greater than negative 2? Negative 3 is not greater than negative 2 because it appears on the left side on the number line. So we say that this is false. So that means 1, 4 is not a solution. With these linear inequalities, there are infinitely many solutions. So we have to check each one to see if it ends up being true in the original inequality. Let's do the same thing for part b. We're going to replace x with 4 and y with negative 1 in the original inequality. So 2 times 4 plus 4 times negative 1. We're going to check to see if that's greater than or equal to positive 6. By simplifying, we get 8 plus 4 times negative 1, negative 4. And 8, by simplifying that, we get 4. Is 4 greater than or equal to 6? We know that that is false. So 4 negative 1 is not a solution to that inequality. Let's check with negative 3, negative 3. Replacing the x with negative 3 and the y with positive 3, we want to check to see if this inequality is true. By multiplying before we add, we get negative 6 plus 12, which is 6. Is 6 greater than or equal to positive 6? Since it's equal, the inequality is true. And that means negative 3, 3 is a solution. Here we will need to graph inequalities. Since these are linear inequalities, we can rewrite each of these inequalities in the form of point-slope form. Remember that y is equal to mx plus b, where m is equal to the slope and b is equal to the y-intercept? Well, we can write these inequalities in a similar format, where we can write them as y is either greater than or equal to mx plus b, or y is less than or equal to mx plus b, or we can write them as y greater than mx plus b, or y is less than mx plus b. In the case where you have the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, in both of these cases we are going to use solid lines. In the case where we have y greater than or y less than mx plus b, 
Here we're going to be using dotted lines. We call these lines the boundary lines. Either the solution includes the boundary line with a solid line or the solution does not include that boundary line, so we would have a dotted line. In the case where you're looking at y is greater than or equal to or y is greater than or greater than mx plus b, in both of these cases, we're looking at all the y's that are above that line. So the shading you would do is you would shade above the line. When we have y is less than or equal to or y is less than mx plus b, here the shading we would do is below. We're looking at all the y values below that line. Let's rewrite the first inequality x plus y greater than or equal to 2 in the form of y equals mx plus b with an inequality sign. Here we're subtracting x from both sides and the inequality can be written as y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. Here we will be graphing a solid line because our inequality is greater than or equal to. And we would also be shading above the line since we have the inequality in the form of y is greater than or equal to mx plus b. We also know by the form of the line that the slope is equal to negative 1 or negative 1 over 1 and the y-intercept is equal to 2. We can plot the y-intercept where our scale of each of these boxes is equal to 1, the y-intercept is 2, and the slope is negative 1 over 1. So we go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, and so on. You can go in both directions here. Now the inequality is a line that goes through those, and since we are looking at a solid line, And then we would be doing some shading here. Since we have the inequality y greater than or equal to, that means we're going to be shading above that line. This is a good time to use a highlighter when you're working on graphing inequalities. In the second example, we have y is less than negative 1 over 5x. We can see that the type of line that we need to do is going to be a dotted line because we're using just the less than inequality. Also, we see that this is in the form of y is less than, so that means we're going to be shading below that inequality line. We can see that the slope of this line, because it's written in the y equals mx plus b form, the slope is negative one-fifth, and the b is equal to zero. So the line goes through the origin and it has a slope of negative 1 over 5. So from that origin we move down 1 and to the right 5. And we can also move up 1 and to the left 5. We're going to connect those with a dotted line because we have the inequality y is less than. And we need to shade. The shading we will be doing is below the line since our inequality is in the form of y is less than negative one-fifth x. For part f here, our inequality is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 5. We want to first solve it for y. We do that by subtracting 2x from both sides and we get y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 5. We can see that this inequality should be a solid line because the inequality sign is less than or equal to. And we can also see that we should shade below the line. By using the slope of negative 2 or negative 2 over 1 and the y-intercept of negative 5, we can plot points that are on this line beginning with the y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of negative 2, going down 2 to the right 1, or you can go in the opposite direction, up 2 and to the left 1. By plotting those points and connecting with a solid line, we can sketch this inequality by shading the appropriate side, and since our inequality is in form of y is less than or equal to, 
we're going to be shading below. So we have solid line shaded below. Here we are graphing the solution to the following systems. These are systems of linear inequalities. We're going to write each one in the form of y equals mx plus b with an inequality symbol. Our first equation or inequality is 2x is less than or equal to y. By rearranging the order of these by putting the right side on the the y on the left side of the equation and the 2x on the right side of the equation, we want the inequality to open up to the y. So 2x is less than or equal to y can be written as y is greater than or equal to 2x. We know that this is going to be a solid line and since it's in the form of y is greater than or equal to, we're going to be shading above that line. We also know that the slope of this line is 2 or 2 over 1 and the intercept is 0. We can sketch these points beginning at the origin with a slope of 2, up 2 to the right, 1, and so on. And then we would sketch this solid line that goes through those points. Now in terms of the shading here, we want to shade the solution to the system of inequalities. We want to know where the two separate inequalities, if you graph them together, would overlap. So I'm going to be using a yellow highlighter to shade the part here that is above this line. And then I'll be using a blue highlighter to shade the solution to the second inequality. And where those two overlap, that is going to be your final solution to the system of inequalities. Let's write the second equation. x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. And I want to solve this for the inequality in the form of y equals mx plus b. But I'm going to be subtracting x from both sides to get y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. Now you can see that because of the inequality symbol is a greater than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line, solid boundary line. And the greater than or equal to means that we're going to be shading above the slope of this line is negative 1 and the y-intercept is 2. By plotting those points beginning at 2 on the y-axis with a slope of negative 1, down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, and so on, and using a solid line here, and I'm going to use a blue highlighter to shade above. Now keep in mind I want to find out where they overlap and the part where they overlap is in this region here. So your final answer would only be the part where they overlap. We've got two solid boundary lines and then shaded only the part that overlaps. For the second system of inequalities, we want to write each inequality in the form of y equals mx plus b. The first inequality, x minus y is greater than 3, can be solved for y by subtracting x from both sides. When you do that, you get negative y is greater than negative x plus 3. We want to get y by itself, but it has a negative 1 in front, or a negative in front. So we are going to you could either multiply or divide both sides of this inequality by negative 1. Now with inequalities, you really have to be careful when you're multiplying or dividing. Since we're dividing or multiplying by a negative sign, the direction of the inequality will change. So this negative 1 times negative y is going to be a positive y. The direction of this inequality is going to change. Instead of a greater, it's going to be a less than. And this negative x times negative 1 is positive x minus 3. So with that, we see that this is going to be a dotted line. Since the inequalities in the form of y is less than, we're going to shade below the line. 
we can also see that the slope of this line is 1 and the intercept is negative 3. So we begin graphing this inequality starting at negative 3 on the y-axis with our graph paper as one unit in scale. A slope of positive 1, so up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, and so on. So this is our dotted line for the boundary line. And then y is less than, we are going to be shading below this line. Now you can also use the method of picking test points. And if the test point is true, you're going to shade that half of the line. If the test point is false, you would not shade that portion of the line. The second inequality is in the form of y, y is less than 2. Now this, is, this inequality only has a y in it. So remember, that's a special case of the line. If it only has a y, it's a horizontal line, and the slope is 0. And the equation is in the form of y equals. Now we're dealing with inequalities. It's going to be a horizontal boundary line going through 2 on the y-axis. Horizontal line that goes through 2 on the y-axis. And this is written in the form of y is less than 2. So we know that this is going to be a dotted boundary line. We also know that it's going to be shading below. Now I only want to shade the portion, the final portion, where those two separate inequality shadings will overlap. Here we're shading everything below that line. So our solution to this inequality is going to be just the part where they overlap. I've got my two boundary lines. I shaded below both of them. And the only part that's below both of them would be this part here. So I don't want to shade. This is my final answer. Just that section that's below both of those.